when we think of the strength of Pokemon, we tend to get lost looking at their individual stats, move pool, and abilities. However, this Pokemon shows us that strength is also found in teamwork, and coordination, and camaraderie, and trust. This is the story of Phalanx. Now let's get one thing clarified. Uh, this fighting type Pokemon is actually comprised of six individual Phalanx that work as a team. The leader, or the very head of Phalanx, is known as the Brass, with the remaining five being known as the Troopers. And once all six of these pieces come together, then, lo and behold, we have the Pokemon known as Phalanx. Now this means each individual segment of Phalanx must spend time searching for and bonding with other individual or smaller groups of Phalanx to form the full six Phalanx Pokemon. And you might be asking how this might occur. Well, there's there's a lot of theories. Obviously, first and foremost, they could be family. I'll kind of touch on that uh, later on in the video, though. But the brass has been known to go out and search for these other segments to add to its party so that it can become one full on phalanx. But I'm curious if that means that a full phalanx segment or a full phalanx Pokemon can have certain segments that are shiny because when we see in the game or even if they ever show it in the anime they'll probably show phalanx as one entire shiny but they're all six individual pieces so does that mean the brass goes out and searches for other shiny pieces i know i've seen where it says the armor can come off i doubt that that's true uh, I've also seen where uh, the the shiny gene could be passed along to other segments of the Phalanx once they join the group, the cohort, so to speak. Again, I don't think that's true. I would like to think that a shiny Phalanx could actually have pieces that are not shiny and they're sort of mixed and matched together. And uh, yeah, I think that would be cool. What are your thoughts about that? Now, the importance of bonding with the correct group is that they rely on each other for their survival, particularly the brass. The brass makes the decision. Phalanx, the formation Pokemon, a fighting type. Phalanx has a leader called the brass and five followers called troopers. The brass gives all the orders. It ensures that the entire system is eating, is safe, is protected. It makes the decisions for the entire organism, so to speak. And if you have a weak head, then the rest of the organism is sure to fail. There are even records, although they're rare, where the trooper Pokemon will go into a full panic mode if they ever lose their brass Pokemon. And they will even start following other Pokemon, even if they're not Phalanx, and treating them as the brass, just so they can get some semblance of comfort and ease and reassurance because they now have a leader they can follow and they have that protection. Now, Phalanx are typically seen in what we call a column formation. So that's where they are lined up one behind the other and they walk and march in perfect unison. They've even been seen fitting and marching straight through small holes and crevices and cracks on Route 8. And in battle, the formation can change even more so as some can stack on top of each other to execute certain uh, attacks. The brass might even send out or dispatch some of the other troopers to fight on its own. And that's known as the dispatch formation. Meaning, okay, meaning, yes, they do have their own bodies. And we kind of mentioned this before. They do have their own bodies. They can move independently of each other. And it's not like a human centipede situation. They can all go out and the families can adapt different uh, formations to complete certain tasks, whether that is hunting or defending or scouting or even resting and looking for food even though if we look at them they don't have mouths so they have to eat somehow but uh, each segment has their own duty to perform in battle the six individual phalanx rely on each other to employ various battle strategies remember the brass is the brains of the operation here so it will dictate it will lead the other phalanx in battle employing certain battle strategies so throughout the battle they will change their forms depending on what is needed in their defensive form it is nearly impossible to break through their ranks as each unit 
will position itself in their shields in different orientations and this will maximize the area of protection. However, they are quite susceptible, they are quite weak when they change forms from let's say the defensive form to more of an offensive form where they want to attack. They are very susceptible when they're changing their ranks in that regard. Consequently, they practice changing forms on a daily basis, ensuring that they are efficient and they are as swift as possible. And Phalanx are observed to be very valiant fighters. The troopers, if ordered by the brass, will never give up on a fight. They will never back down. They'll never surrender in a battle, even if the odds are against them. This is evident in the move No Retreat, and this will grant Phalanx a boost in all of their stats, a one-stage boost in all of their stats, at the cost of not being able to retreat or withdraw from a battle. Now, if we're talking actual competitive battling, Phalanx is an absolutely underwhelming and never used Pokemon. It has some decent stats with attack and defense being at 100, so it could be used as maybe a physical wall breaker. However, the speed is lacking and it's easily outclassed by its counterpart or rival Pokemon, Sock. And Sock has better attack stat, it is faster, and it has a more diverse move pool and access to things like knockoff, which is much more uh, flexible and usable in competitive battling. Now, physiologically, troopers and, and brass uh, have some physical differences, physical variations. Some of the main differences are going to be the horns on top of the head. The brass have a significantly larger, more powerful crested horn that is extendable and used for executing attacks. Additionally, the shields on the troopers are in a fixed location, kind of like right there on their cheeks, whereas the shields on the brass Pokemon are opposable. They can move these shields around. And typically, as Phalanx marches, the brass, which is at the very front, will have the shields covering its face, resembling a type of mask or face guard. Now, each trooper does have a small red horn on the posterior, which kind of resembles a tail. And uh, in terms of the naming, you might wonder, well, why is it called a brass? Like, why is the leader called brass? Well, this is referring to high-ranking members of military or potentially high-ranking persons in business or in government. So persons in high positions. Phalanx's inspiration, I'll start with the boring and move to the more interesting, it starts with the Admiral Caterpillar and it also can take inspiration from eusocial creatures. Now that means uh, it's a social animal behavior where certain, in, certain species of insects, crustaceans, and mammals have division of labor among their members. And we can see that with the phalanx, where each segment will maybe scout or hunt or take watch as the other phalanx rests. They all have their different parts to play. Additionally, this is the cooler piece. Phalanx can be inspired by the group of soldiers in a phalanx formation, where each unit is lined up close to each other, and they cover each other's sides with their shields. And again, we can see that in battle with phalanx, they have those shields or position themselves, so they are protecting the other phalanx as well as themselves. And their features, their physical features, also resemble a Spartan's helmet during the period of ancient Rome because it's all adorned with these golden plates and these red crests, and it looks really awesome. There is also, or at least could be, some inspiration from the Legio 9 Hispania, and this is also known as the Ninth Roman Legion or the Lost Legion, and this part is really cool. This Lost Legion, they're named this because they mysteriously disappeared in Britain right around 120 AD one of the longest standing mysteries of our time. Nobody knows what happened to them. They just disappeared. The name Phalanx can be a combination of a variety of things. Phalanx, family, link, like a chain link, and then fallen, which is like a fallen line, kind of explaining their fighting typing. Interestingly, Phalanx are genderless Pokemon. So how do Phalanx breed? And this goes back to the question, well, how do each individual segment of Phalanx find each other? Because if it's based on family, but then they're genderless Pokemon, what is their means of reproduction? And 
how do they populate? Do they, can they mate with like a ditto or, or it, it would make more sense. This is my hot take on phalanx. It would make more sense if there was a secondary typing. Maybe there's a ghost typing, hint, hint at one of the redesigns that A did. Uh, maybe it would make more sense if there were a psychic typing or even like a steel typing, fighting steel typing, and they would connect through like magnetism similar to Magnemite or even Metagross or something like that. I don't know, just having a fighting typing seems insufficient to me. Maybe they could evolve and it's kind of like a Power Rangers situation because they're all different segments, but then they evolve and they form like one giant Megazord and that's their evolution. And that could also give them their secondary typing of a steel type or or it could be like a Seru Ledge situation where it's a ghost type and they are connected through the souls or other dimensions or something like that. I don't know, but eh. The fighting typing is just odd to me because it doesn't look like it could really fight. It doesn't have arms. It's just a head as a horn uh, and, and that's it, right? So the, it seems misplaced just to be a fighting type. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments, uh, but that's that's phalanx. There's some cool stuff in there, some interesting facts in there. So if you enjoyed the video, please make sure you leave a like. And uh, and if you're new to the channel, subscribe. If you want to do any, if you want me to do any other Pokemon, leave that in the comments. Check out some of our other videos and I'll catch you in the next episode. Peace.